Okay, so I'm going to use my live streaming setup uh, in order to do like a quick tutorial for a guy on Reddit, basically. Um, and it's it's a tutorial that I kind of already know isn't the best way of doing it according to other people. So, you know, whatever. But this is how I do it. Um, and for the sake of ease, I've chosen one of my teammates here and there's not a load of other stuff going on in the background um, because... I just can't be bothered doing that. I'm not going to like fine tune these up because it's just I'm going to show you the technique that I use um, and that's that. I'm not interested in getting it pitch perfect exactly right. But basically, what I will typically do if I'm going to put him on a poster, I'll come in here like this. I will get a rectangle. I will put the rectangle over him so that it gets just. The extremities basically if I can see anything of him outside of this rectangle things have gone wrong um, and then what I'll do is I'll pop him inside there so you can see we've already cropped it down to this um, from this point on I'll go convert to curves use this little bad over here the bad boy over here the node tool um, and from here I can basically move bits around so what I'll try and do is try and get it as close to him as I can um, using these without trying to cut off too much. If I cut off anything, I want to be able to see where it would be. So, don't cut off anything too exciting. Right. So we're already getting on with cropping them down, and now what I'll basically do is start trying to tighten up this uh, this net, so to speak. So places where he's already touching the edge, I'm basically going to add a point, and then somewhere between that and the second point that I've added in there, I'll add another one, and I can go like this. So. Again, this is just like a rough thing, and then we can pull him out. And at that point, this obviously can be moved down again. So, where should we go here? I'm gonna take that into there. Oh, I tend to turn off the uh, snapping tool because for stuff which is like ergonomic shapes, I don't find that particularly useful. Um, <coughs> then I just stop going around. Pulling them out, pulling the shapes out. Um, so I normally wouldn't start getting involved in these handles at this point. I would do that later. So we'll just delete them off of here for now and deal with straight lines at this point. Um, it's not the end of the world. You can just do it however you want to do it, but I just choose not to. So we're just trying to make this net as tight as we can without wasting too much time into getting it exactly right. And every now and then I'll just add some bits so I can still see the whole image roughly. And because the, these points are still going to be used at some point so it's not like you're wasting your time. Um, da, 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 da. that weird sort of snapping, even though there's no snapping turn on you can see it still snaps around and does stuff that's very frustrating but it is what it is, we get used to it I'm sure I can turn it off, someone will tell me that but it, at this point it doesn't really matter So the thing is, once you start getting into handles and stuff, then it starts kind of growing uh, out of control how many handles and nodes and stuff that you've got going on, and we don't want that quite yet. Now, I read somewhere, and I kind of would tend to agree, that you want to have as few uh, anchor points as you possibly can, because you're just making life harder for yourself if you start adding more and more and more and more bits in there. It's also worth considering your actual like final use case as to how accurate you want to be on this sort of thing. Um, I mean, obviously, there's not really a scenario where I'm going to want to super, be super rough about this um, because per everyone knows what a person looks like and so on and so forth. Um, and if you mess it up, it's really obvious, but. When I'm when I'm cropping these sort of things out, I'm doing it for a poster, and it's just going to be a computer-generated background. Um, I will definitely err on the side of cutting into the person rather than um, 
leaving like a bit of grass or something like that between the person and the edge of the crop because that way when you put it onto the can like people notice what's there people don't notice what's not there so if you take away like a bit of width on their arm or a bit of material out the side or something like that people don't notice that it's not there if you leave a bit of grass so say we left this bit in here i mean obviously that's massively extreme but say we did that would be really obvious if we move that across and we were missing like sort of a a few pixels on the inside of his body, no one would notice that. In fact, he'd probably be thankful for losing a little bit of weight there off of uh, off of his um, physique, but not that there's anything wrong with his physique. I, I wish I was as athletic, but there we go. Uh, this snapping thing is kind of annoying me now. I need to figure out how to turn that off. I must have figured out how to turn it off before because I'm not used to that happening. Um, I have this on Mac and PC, and I normally do this on my Mac, so that's obviously where I've turned that setting off before. Um, but yeah, and once you've sort of got a bit of a, probably a bit of a tighter mask than that, then you can start uh, zooming in and like actually getting up, getting them nice and tight onto the image that you're trying to get. And sometimes you're going to be like, you'll find a bit like this, where you've got a curve one way and a curve the other way. That's fine. We're just going to put that one where it should be. And then use the Alt key to bang off a few of these uh, and, uh, handles so that you get the shapes that you want. And don't be overly afraid to like, wang it about so you can see where the, where you're where you're trying to get to, so to speak. Um... And you'll get kind of used to how these handles work and how how you want to do things and that as you go through. Anyway, you can imagine you basically just carry on doing that all the way around, right? Um, it is it is time consuming. I'm not saying it's not, but the good thing about it is is that once you've done that, um, you just move this rectangle around or the curve now that you've t turned it to curves, and um, and your crop is going to be. Like maintained, uh, you can resize it and do all your other stuff that you'd normally do. To not that you'd ever want to make your person look like that, but you know what I'm saying. So that's one way of doing it, and that's the way that I tend to do. Just because I've done it enough times, that I can bang through that pretty quick, typically. So we'll turn that one off now. Turn this one on. Um, the other way I described was going into the pixel mode, and I think I actually said just lasso them, draw around them effectively. Um, and I never ever would typically draw around like this because I'm just not that steady. I have got a tablet, but I still can't ever get a decent crop if I do that. Uh, maybe I've just got sort of um, some kind of freaky out hand disease or something, but yeah, I'm not very good at that. Um, what I would typically do, and you can see how I do this. Uh, on the other way of doing it as well is I'll just start going bop 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 obviously on this you want to be a bit more again this is like massively rough but you just go around like zoom in make it a bit more um, easy to and although you're making straight lines if you do enough of them and do them close enough no one's going to notice that when you cut your uh, cut your subject out and again, as I say, please do not think that this is the calibre of work that I'd ever actually use. This is just so that I can show you the techniques before you die of absolute massive amounts of boredom. Uh, if you're not already there, that is. Obviously, the more points that you, or the more clicks you do, I should say, the more um, accurate your crop is going to be. But, but, oh, chopped a bit of his knee off there, oh well. So 
So yeah, so once you've got your, your subject all done nice and tightly like that, then you can come up here, select invert pixel selection or control shift I. Now you have the background selected, and now it's just a case of backspace. Um, not entirely sure why that hasn't deleted that. Um, let's undo that. Hmm, hmm. This is a technique I use in Photoshop. I haven't really ever done it in this, so I have to. Invert pixel selection. Well, I guess if I was struggling, I'd just rub it out of the eraser. <laughs> but. I'm surprised you can't just press delete. I'm obviously just doing overlooking something obvious there. But nonetheless, this is how I would end up with it. And that's what I'm looking for, right? Um, so then you can do what you want to do with that. Um, there's other tools up here that's probably worth mentioning. Like you've got... Uh, is it in here? Yeah, so grow and shrink. So say you'd done it super, super tight, but you just weren't happy that it was tight enough. You could shrink your selection. I mean, obviously, I'm doing it to extremes here. You can see the dotted line moving about, but you could shrink it. And then you can see you could take away the outside lines without too much difficulty. And this is kind of like where in my post where I mentioned... Um, depending on how I how whether I want a sharp line or a um, uh, a sharp line or a sort of mixed line, this is how you can kind of do it. I mean, I wouldn't ever do it that extreme. Um, I probably would use feather anyway rather than that. Let's, let's get out of that, shall we? Um, let's invert pixelation back to actually any, and then so feather is going to kind of soften your mask like obviously again massive extremes just to show you that it's doing something but typically if you were to feather it like a couple of pixels that's going to give you that when you put it onto your other image it kind of obviously your exposure and color and everything of the photo are going to matter but that will make it so there's not an obvious slice round because a lot of people's photos are not going to be in focus so if you do put an in-focus photo into an out-focus photo, it's going to be super obvious, especially if there's a really hard line around it. Whereas if you feather the radius, uh, the feather, the uh, edge of it, the subject, or the bit you're putting in there a little bit, it will make it slightly less easy to pick out. But anyway, I, I don't typically have to do that in what, in what I'm using. So that's one way of doing it. And then you could literally go back to the, um, uh, what we call it, draw persona, and you've got, again, your little fella, you can mish it about. Now, the difference with this is that your grass and everything like that is actually gone. Whereas with the other one, if we go back to this guy here, let's just get rid of that selection. Fantastic. My VPN's decided to update in the middle of doing this. Um, we'll go to this guy here. If we went back to the nodes, you can all the grass and that is still there. So if you suddenly had a change of thought or a change of heart that you wanted a bit of the grass in there, you can it's easily dealt with. Um so with that all being said, we go back here, turn this one on. Someone was saying use the uh, as far as I could understand it, they were saying use this. Now I'll make that a little bit wider. So, for my use case, this is a bit harder. You can see that it kind of works. There's just the little bits that, I mean, it's definitely better than I remember it, so maybe I should not overlook this way. Mind you, I mean, I think they said clipping masks. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen the term clipping mask in designer. 
I haven't really been looking for it, but I haven't seen it. So maybe this is not what they meant. But this is certainly another avenue you can go down. It certainly seems to be working a lot better than when I first used this in Photoshop and basically it would just select the most jagged, horrible outlines of things that you've ever seen in your life. So there we go. Have we got... Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's like a... Not add and subtract up here. So where, where it's a bit pony there, I can subtract. Oh. See, this is the kind of thing. And then you end up... Battling it. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, and it's it's like everything. You just need to go around and refine it and make it good. So um, maybe I was too quick to say that that's not how I like to do it. Same scenario in terms of inverted pixel selection. But obviously, I'm not doing the right thing here in terms of pressing the delete button. But again. We'll just use the erase brush and we have the subject separated out. So, three different ways. Um, I'm not entirely sure one is better than the other. Uh, I suppose it depends on your use case. Um, but yeah, if you're struggling to do it, there's three different ways of doing it. Uh, I'm certainly not in a position to tell you which is the best. Um, so, anyway, thanks for watching.